News Radio 1290 WNBF in Binghamton now. We're live and local on a Tuesday morning. I'm Bob Joseph, and we welcome back to the studio Michael Vasquez, who is planning to challenge the Republican Congressman Richard Hanna. Well, welcome back to our, our station. Well, thank you, and I'm glad to be back with you, Bob. It's been a very busy day in the last couple of days. Yeah, bring me up to speed. First of all, for our listeners who haven't heard you before, you've for the last several months been been talking about the, uh, the prospect of, of challenging Republican Richard Hanna for the November 2014 for his uh, his reelection bid and um, so you you've been laying the groundwork for this campaign for some time now and tell me what you've been up to most recently as you work to get your message out and make yourself more well known in this congressional district well, since you're right, when it was about April when I first made my announcement that I was looking at an exploratory committee. And really, I wasn't planning to challenge Mr. Hanna at that time. I wanted to see, did other people agree with me? Over the months, they have, a lot. And that's because, I mean, look at the congressional approval rate. It's about 8.5%. It was 15% back then. Congress is just not doing its job. They're not effective. And... As I've gone throughout the entire district, I've been talking to everybody, and I've been getting the same answers back, confirming that there is a need for someone who's connected to the regular people, somebody who is the regular people who can go down to Congress and say, okay, let's really actually focus on what people want to have done, because what they're focusing on now is everything but that. We need to get that changed. That's something that's a universal thing, yeah. from Democrats to Republicans. We all agree on that. What do you sense is, is the biggest vulnerability for Richard Hanna as, as you look ahead to next September, which is when a primary would be held, a Republican primary, which could involve you and, and potentially uh, Michael Kaczynski of Earlville. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see that the, the biggest weakest has got to be his record, quite honestly. And look at his inconsistency. He'll make a statement, and he'll vote in an entirely different way. That's something that, if you can't trust where your representative is going to be on an issue, if you can't understand how they are going to vote, that's a question. That, that's, a, that's an issue. That's a major issue, I believe. And that's one of the biggest problems we have right now with most politicians, because they're being politicians, not representatives. They're going out there and they're voting ways that don't make sense to constituents. Uh, I look forward to going forward, to getting to September, whether Mr. Kaczynski or myself are in this at that point, and uh, seeing what the voters have to say about this. Because I believe when you hear the voters speak and they look at what we are saying and what we've done and what Mr. Hanna has done, they come down to the same conclusion that I've come to. We need to change. We need someone else in there, someone who actually is connected. What did you make of the circumstances that resulted in the shutdown of the federal government and bringing the country to the brink of, of actually uh, not paying off its, its obligations? It was a spectacle that uh, certainly dominated media coverage for the better part of a month. What was your take on that? Well, I know a lot of people would be surprised by this, but... I don't think it was a bad idea if it was based on the principle. And when I say when it's based on the principle, I mean if you believe that Obamacare is the first law that places the government above the people and it gives the government the right to tell people they must do something. And if the government can tell you you must do one thing, that means the government can tell you you must do anything. And that violates our Constitution. That violates our rights and freedoms if we, as we've always had them. And if you're saying that that is an issue that must be addressed, that must be corrected, then a shutdown makes sense. And if you're saying that my constituents, since June of 2009, have always disagreed with this law as it's written, and that it needs to be improved and corrected, and you're making the stance on that basis, then yes, I agree with the, with the shutdown. And I think that if you voted against Obamacare, as Mr. Hanna has, as many representatives have, and you say to yourself that this is something that we do not support, 
and our constituents do not support, then on day two of a shutdown, when really nothing in the nation has truly been affected yet, you don't turn around and say, I give up. It's ironic that if, say, Senator Ted Cruz and people, others like him who, who supported the government shutdown and were adamant about stopping, halting Obamacare, the so-called Affordable Care Act, um, ironically, if they had their way, Barack Obama probably wouldn't feel quite as uh, agonized as he is today. I mean, it's, it's almost one of those things, given what's transpired uh, since October 1st, we've seen this was certainly a government program that was not ready for prime time or any time. It's, it's had huge problems. I don't know of any federal government endeavor in the two centuries plus that the country has existed that, that has been more unsuccessful on its launch, and it seems even uh, desperate efforts to fix it are, are doomed to fail at this point. Well, that's because they're focusing on quick fixes. They're, they're not really looking at the long-term efforts. Matter of fact, it would seem that since its inception, it's never been completely thought out. We see that in the website. We see that in the, in, in the fix now to give insurance companies the option to uh, stop these canceled policies and let them be active, which they can't do because that's a violation of law. And while Mr. President Obama has said, no, don't worry, I won't prosecute that, he doesn't have that right. That's, that's a huge grab of power by the presidency to try and reshape law, which he doesn't have the power to do. And so those, while it looks great, and there's the thing, it looks great that he says, oh, don't worry about it, it's okay, when every, every institution out there knows you can't do that, and it's still law, and they'll still get prosecuted, which means the cancellations stay. If they really thought this plan out, we would know three years ago, back in 2010, that people were going to have cancellations. Senator Gillibrand uh, recently was on ABC News. She mentioned it. Clearly, all the Democrats knew it back then. President Obama knew about it. He's admitted that. Why didn't the public? And why didn't they plan out this uh, website better? 